Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chista Summit. And today you are joining me from the beautiful woods here in Northeastern Massachusetts for a quick tutorial video. So I've had a lot of people ask me, how exactly do I use the back to start or navigation features on my Garmin watch? So I thought I'd make a really short video just to show you how powerful these watches can be if you're lost in the woods by yourself and don't have a map or a compass or anything like that, which you should have. But if you don't, your watch can do a lot. So I thought I'd bring you out here on my own trails, try to get myself a little bit lost, and then show you how to get back to the beginning of your activity in real time out here on the trails. So first things first, what you'll need for this video to make sense to you at all is a Garmin watch with navigation. This can be anything from a Forerunner 245, a Forerunner 955, a Forerunner 945, a Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus, uh, Garmin Phoenix 5X, Garmin Phoenix 5, uh, there's a lot of them out there. The Garmin Phoenix 7, the Epix Gen 2, the original Epix if you have one of those kicking around. All of these watches are capable of what I'm about to show you to varying degrees and I'll explain that as we go through this. The main difference here is that some of these watches have what's called a base map and navigation built in. That would be something like the Garmin Phoenix 7, Phoenix 6, 5 plus, 955, 945, all those have mapping built in. There's probably more I didn't mention there, but you get the idea. And then the other watches I mentioned, like the 245, the 255, the 745, all of those have navigation, but they don't have a base map. So they can't actually calculate a route. Whereas like the Garmin Phoenix 7 can calculate a route right on your wrist without needing a computer or a smartphone or anything. It has that map downloaded to its internal storage and it's capable of routing a course for you in real time while it's on your wrist. Another important detail before we move on is that some watches out there from Garmin don't have navigation built in at all. And that would be like the Garmin Forerunner 55, which is the cheapest Forerunner at 200 bucks. No navigation there. And then also the Garmin Venue or Vivo Active Series. Those don't have navigation either because they're not really designed for this purpose. They're more of a wellness watch. So with that out of the way, the prerequisite here, I hope that all made sense and I just didn't rattle off a bunch of model numbers to you. Let's move on. Okay, for the purpose of this video, let's pretend that I'm lost. Even though I'm really not, this is kind of my local trail system. System. Uh, but I'm about a mile and a half into the woods right now and without a watch or a phone or a map I'd be pretty confused on where I was if I was not familiar with this area but then I remember I'm wearing a Garmin Foreigner 955 and this thing has full mapping and navigation capability so I don't need to panic all I have to do is trigger a back to start so in order to trigger a back to start what you have to do is hold down the left middle button on your Garmin Foreigner or Phoenix or Epix any of those watches are the same hold down the middle button on the left side, which is the settings button, that'll bring you into your activity settings. Within your activity settings, you're gonna scroll down halfway until you see navigation. Within the navigation settings, you're gonna scroll down again, and there's gonna be a bunch of stuff in here from courses, site and go, save location, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Ignore all that for now, that'll be for a separate video that I'll film down the road. In this video, you wanna scroll down until you see back to start or track back. It might be different depending on the watch you have. Now within the back to start settings, you're gonna have a couple of options depending on the watch that you have. If you have a Garmin Forerunner 955 or a Phoenix 7 or a Phoenix 6 Pro, any watch like that with built-in built mapping, you're gonna see an option for course. And what that means is that it's going to actually create a course depending on your location to get back to the beginning of your activity as quickly as possible. Now, calculating a course back to the beginning of your activity can vary on how long it can take. On an older watch, like a Garmin Phoenix 5X or 5 Plus, it might take a minute at most to generate a course back to the beginning of your activity. On some of these newer watches, like the Garmin Forerunner 955, it is nearly instantaneous to generate a course. So once you have your course loaded up on your watch, you simply scroll down to it through the data page Pages, get to your map and you'll see a purple line on your map that indicates the direction that you should be traveling in and at every corner or turn or trail junction you'll also see an arrow that indicates which way you should turn kind of like turn by turn navigation 
The course navigation feature is incredibly powerful on these Garmin watches and a big reason why they're still some of my favorite sports watches on the market right now. And it's just totally unbelievable what these things can do in a pinch when you're out there in the woods. And this is just kind of scratching the tip of the iceberg when it comes to course navigation on these Garmin watches. So that's option one when it comes to navigating back to the beginning of your activity. Option two is what's more widely available on a lot of watches, and that's gonna be called Trackback. And what Trackback does is much simpler. It basically takes the course that you establish to run your activity, say you're two miles in like I am right now, and it will actually reverse that course and then create a course on your watch to follow. And to be honest, the Trackback function is perfectly adequate in most situations. And yeah, that's really it for this video. I just wanted to kind of outline and explain what the difference was between course navigation and track back, how to use them, where they are in your watch, and I might surprise you and let you know that this is actually available in your watch and maybe you just didn't know about it. And if you didn't know about it, I would love if you drop down into the comments down below and let us know if this was a helpful video, if I should make more little tutorial videos like this. Let me know in the comments down below if this was helpful or if this is something you already knew about. And if you did find this video helpful or fun or entertaining or anything, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. All right, friends, that's the end of this video. Now that I've been talking to the camera and not looking at where I'm going and I'm actually properly lost now, I'm gonna go ahead and use my track back function to get back to the beginning of my activity. Okay, I think that's all for this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye.